Hello, welcome to the Exhausted Programmer. My name is Alexander, and today we'll be taking a look at Tmux. Tmux, which is short for Terminal Multiplexer, is a tool that can solve multiple problems. It can help with persistence, especially over a weak connection. It can allow you to share a terminal screen with someone else on another computer. And it can be used to help manage looking at multiple things through a terminal screen, as if you have multiple terminals open in a single terminal. It can also be scripted with Bash, which we'll look at at the end of this video, as a way to get the most out of it to help with your workflow. So let's open up Tmux and get started. To get started in Tmux, it's as simple as running Tmux. And there we go. The changes might not seem obvious, except for the green bar at the bottom, but we have unlocked a number of tools that we can use while running stuff in Bash. The reason I first got into Tmux was to solve a problem with persistence. I would run some program, and then when I close up my terminal window, or I detach from an SSH server connection, uh, the process would just stop. This is pretty common because when you run something in Bash, it's run as a child of Bash. So if your instance of Bash closes, the process itself ends. Let's take a look at an example. In my scripts folder, I have a program or a script called countdown. You give it a minute, seconds, and some sort of message. And when you do, you get a little countdown window. Now in standard bash or when you're not running tmux, once you close out of this window, this process stops. But here we can detach and the session is actually still running even though it's not running on our screen. This is great if you're running some sort of node server or some other web server and you don't wanna to have to keep up multiple terminal windows open just so that your website doesn't shut down. When we go back to it, we see that the time had elapsed, as we'd expect if it was running without us seeing it. This isn't the only way of getting something to run in the background or without seeing it, but it's a pretty convenient one for new users. Before we get into this, it is worth pointing out that there is a config file you can create that will adjust the way that Tmux works. You can change any of the key bindings, but specifically the prefix key combo. If there is no config file, if you're using the default settings, it's control B. You hit control B and then some key combo afterwards to tell Tmux you're talking to it and not the process inside of Tmux. It is very common in the software world to just share config files without explaining what everything in them does. So if control B is not working for you, you probably have a config file in your home directory. Make sure you run ls-a to see all the hidden files, which the config file will be. There are other places to hide a config file but we're not going to go into all that here. Just if it's not working for you, find the person most responsible for your software and ask them where their config file is located. So assuming your prefix key has not changed, uh, if you hit control B, lift up your hand and then hit D, that is how we detach from a session like we did earlier. And to get back into it, we can do Tmux A. A is short for attached. So you can spell it out completely. It is worth noting you can have multiple Tmux sessions going on at the same time. So we have this session 18, but if we do Tmux LS, we see that there's also a session zero and a session 15. And I am attached to 15 on some terminal window somewhere. To specify the specific session you want, you can give it its name. You can do just the A or the word attached in any of these examples. And then if I do dash T and then zero, the T stands for target it will open up zero. If you don't give it a target, it will actually try to connect you to the most recent one that you use. So in this case, it was zero again, but we were in 18, so let's stay in 18. So let's start with HTOP. Let's say we're running HTOP and we notice that there's something we want to look into, but we don't want to close out HTOP. We can create a new window with our prefix key and then the letter C. Now we have a new window. If you look at the bottom, it tries to figure out what program you're running to give it the name. You can rename these, uh, in this case, a comma. And I can call this second for the second window if I want to, or anything I want. It can be very helpful to make these names easy for you to find because then you could do control B and zero to go directly to one of the first 10 windows. You can have more than 10 open, but if you do zero through nine, you can go straight to it. Uh, the N key and the P key will take you to the previous or the next one. So you can use that. It does loop around. So in this case, they do the same thing. Next and next will just go zero to one to zero to one. But you don't wanna be going back and forth between windows because you really want to monitor things at the same time. Well, you can split your window. 
using either the percentage sign to split it vertically or using the double quotations to split it horizontally, you can split your window and you can split it again and again and again. Uh, you might start getting into certain restrictions based on the size and what's on the screen, but a simple clear and you're back to a, a blank canvas. Now you might say, well, some of these windows might need to be bigger and others smaller. Using control B and holding down control, you can adjust the size of windows with your arrow keys. And to change which window you're focused on, I'm sorry, which panel you're focused on, control B and then just the arrow keys allows you to transition. There's a certain window where it will stop transitioning panel to panel, but you'll get it pretty quickly. To close out of any of these windows, uh, control D works. This is a very common key binding you should be aware of. If you hit control D, it just logs out, logs out. It will even close windows and it will even close the Tmux session. So if we do Tmux LS, there is no more session 18. So if we have a Tmux session and we have it broken down into multiple windows like this, and we have HTOP running here, and now we can't see everything running in HTOP and we really need to see something, we can give it the exclamation key and it pops it out into its own window. And it doesn't leave it in the previous window at the same time. What else can you do with Tmux? Well, a lot more. And if we look at the man pages, uh, the keys that I was covering are just a very few of these. And as you see, it just keeps going. There's ways of rotating the windows around. There's ways of doing just all sorts of uh, neat things like switching from a vertical to a horizontal split, whatever works for you. So maybe you're thinking, if I have Tmux on my machine, I can set up a nice system, but I don't maintain the system and someone restarts it every night. How do I maintain the same layout? Maybe it's just too much work to set up every time. Well, no, that is why we have bash scripting. So let's see what we can do with bash scripting and Tmux combined. So let's go into our scripts directory. Let's start a Tmux for YouTube. As always, let's start with this bin bash at the top for portability, even though I don't plan on porting this anywhere else, but you know, for consistency's sake, it's good to give it a session name. Uh, we saw before that the session names will automatically be a number but for reasons that will make sense in just a few seconds, it's very important that we give it something that we can not only define, but can predict. It is determined. It is not left up to an incremental index counter. And so we want to start a new session. So tmux new session. And we give it the session name, which is already defined. This is great because if we ever change this, we don't have to change all the following lines. The dash S is to say this is the session that we want to create. The dash D means start off, detach from it. We do this so that we can add more customized settings to the Tmux session before we attach to it. Now, Tmux can be a bit smart, and we don't always need to give it the window number, or we could just put in zero if we're only using one window. It is up to you, but I'm going to do this again so it's easy to make this stuff portable and copy and pasteable. We can rename the first window. So if we are running, let's say a server somewhere, uh, a very common example for me is running like a node server, Tmux will assign that name to node because it's the program running or NPM. Um, but it, I want to know that it's the maybe front end server. So I can type front end or maybe it's the back end server. I can type in back end or some other shorthand that makes it very clear to me which panel or which window is which server. In this case, I'm just going to name it HTOP because in the first one, we're going to run HTOP. We saw that we didn't have to name it HTOP, but just to give an idea of some of the settings you can set up with this script. And then next we can send keys to the Tmux session. So again, Tmux, we tell it to send keys, uh, key presses. We tell it the target session and window and we tell it the exact keys we want. And then we can do this because control M is an enter key, control M. Uh, that's not how I type when I'm typing in Vim or anywhere else, but for some reason, my brain likes this. You can put in other things to represent the enter key, 
this is just the one I use. There are documentations online and in the men pages that really go into depth of all the options that you can use, not only with Tmux, but with the send key command. Once we have this set up, we can attach to the session like this, save and quit, make it executable. And there we go. Let's close out of this bash screen and then let's run script tmox YouTube. And there we go. We see it's running HTOP in the session name YouTube and the window named HTOP. But we can do more. Let's go back into our scripts and let's create another window. Well, for readability and organization, I go ahead and redefine the window variable. And now we can use some similar commands. First, new window, which is new. This creates a new window. And let's give it a name. I'm gonna call it log. It's very common to monitor log files and there might be multiple log files you want to monitor. So in this case, you might want to split the window. The dash V is for vertical. There is a dash H for horizontal. I think I read it defaults to vertical, but you know, be explicit in your scripts makes it easier to read and easier to understand. Before we used the send keys command to send keys to a specific window that only had one pane. There was no ambiguity there. It was going to go into that only pane that was available, but now we have more than one pane. So let's select the one we want to use when we send keys. We can select pane and these are indexed starting at zero, but then we can just send our keys very similar to before. In this case, we're going to send um, a way of tracking a file. I've used this in a previous video and one day I hope to do a better explanation as to tracking files like this, but the tail dash F command will not only show you the last few lines of the, this log file, but if anything is added to it, it will also put that to screen. Makes it a great way of monitoring web logs or any other logs that are running constantly. But we do have more than one pane, so let's go ahead and look at the next one. We can target the second pane. Again, indexed at zero means one is the second one. We can send keys to it. And I don't have a whole lot running for this, nor do I want to create a whole web server. So we're just going to ls the files in that directory. And then when we start up Tmux, when we attach to it, we can actually choose which window we want to see. For this example, just to have an example, we will choose the first one. And here it is panel zero. I could redefine it or whatever, but this works as well. Let's save and quit and let's see what happens when we run it. We have HTOP here, just as before. I'm gonna quit out of that. If we go to the next window, we see that we are indeed tailing this, a log file, a backup file log, and we LS into the directory that we were in when we started the Tmux session. Before we close out, I just want to point out that I do use Tmux in development and I slightly edited this Tmux server to kind of show you a very standardized example of what you can use for Tmux to make your workflow a little bit easier. In this case, and let's make it a little bit bigger, uh, I create a new window, name it server. Uh, it goes into the project folder. It starts the node server. Uh, in one pane and in a second pane, it uh, creates the uh, front end part of the server. So back end, front end on the same window. I can connect to my SQL database. I might have had the password here in plain text, which is not a good practice, but I did delete it from here and therefore it will prompt me for it. With the simple bash script that we created in this video, hopefully you can see how Tmux can be very useful for you. It can help with projects that you don't manage every day so that you don't have to remember all the different ways of getting all the different servers running. It can also be useful as a tool to help other people join a project quicker. That is to help them get a, an environment set up that is very helpful for them to monitor the things that are important for that project. If you have any questions about Tmux or any other comments 
about any of the subjects covered in this channel, feel free to drop a comment below. Like and subscribe if you liked what you saw, and thank you for watching.